From space, our planet appears calm and peaceful. But we live in a world full of conflict. Many places on Earth witness violence, poverty, oppression and war. It is important for all of us to find ways to solve conflicts in a peaceful manner. The Pestalozzi Children's Foundation is convinced that education is the key to peaceful cohabitation. In Switzerland's Appenzellerland lies the idyllic village of Trogen. It has been home to the Pestalozzi Children's Village for over 60 years. At the end of the Second World War, there were many orphans in Europe. The children's village was created for them. A place where children from warring countries could live peacefully together, irrespective of their origin, religion or culture. In the children's village, they received holistic education seeking balance between head, heart and hand. Today, the activities of the Pestalozzi Children's Foundation are concentrated on education and development cooperation. Let us now have a look at how this is done. St. Gallen Main Station. A Swiss school class is on its way to the Pestalozzi Children's Village. The pupils have just arrived from Basel and are now boarding the Appenzell train, which will bring them to Trogen. Here, they will take part in an exchange project. Dealing with other cultures can best be learned through first-hand practical experience. Mutual understanding is not taught through books. It requires living experience, emotional involvement and personal encounter. During their one-week stay in the children's village, the pupils will learn about and address issues such as discrimination, prejudice and civil courage. They are very excited about the project. In the course of their exchange week, they will meet young people from Serbia, who arrived in the children's village a week ago and have already prepared themselves together with their youth workers or teachers. What does this project want to achieve? Our exchange projects intend to offer a platform for children, adolescents and adults from Switzerland and abroad a platform mainly for the exchange between human beings with all their commonalities and differences. But also, and this is an important part, a platform for the exchange between different cultures. In a first step, the participants are divided in two separate groups. Each group notes down prejudices they harbor about the other group. Here, the young Serbians collect catchwords which, in their opinion, best capture the essence of the Swiss. They summarize the results and note them down on a poster. The following day, the two groups get together for the first time. Referring to the posters, they explain how they perceive the others. And sometimes, one of the two groups breaks out in laughter. Is that how you see us? In a relaxed and playful way, the young people get to know each other better. And in this way, one of the most important rules of communication is put into practice. Talk to each other rather than about each other. In the following days, both groups participate in various exercises and workshops. These exercises and workshops stimulate participants to question their personal prejudices. In this way, the young people experience firsthand how it feels to be marginalized. The title of today's workshop was Learning to be Different. We looked at issues such as discrimination, racism and civil courage. We are not so much interested in defining grand words, we want to find out what hides behind them. We want participants to understand what mechanisms drive these issues. We also want them to experience the various roles firsthand. How does it feel to have power? How does it feel to be discriminated against or marginalized? In a next step, we encourage the groups to identify similar situations situations in daily life, for example in the classroom or in the school ground. Yes, we all know that discrimination and racism exist, but to experience how it feels, that is the central point of this course. 
These experiences enable the pupils to understand the relationships between racism, discrimination, marginalization and prejudices. They can further elaborate and reflect on these experiences in the village's own radio station or in the mobile radio bus, where they can elaborate a radio program on the subject. In doing so, they process the experience gained during the project. Before I make an unjustified judgment, I ought to learn about the culture in the country. Prejudices cannot be trusted. Based on Petzolotzi's principle, head, heart and hand, pupils learn in a holistic manner how important it is to work together when tackling a task. For example, in this one, everybody needs to cooperate, otherwise the entire group will lose. Good. Well done. Go back. You can do it. Okay. In the following days, both groups learn, through exercises, tasks, games and mutual contact, how to respect and appreciate each other. We had prejudices against the Serbians based on how we thought they behave here in Switzerland. We somehow threw them all in one pot, but actually they are very different. Before I came here, I thought that Swiss people are cold and they don't talk to other people uh, that much, but now uh, I changed my mind, I changed my opinion. Yes, you tend to think they are a little bit aggressive, but they really are not. On the contrary. What I will take home is this, they are all very friendly, we are all the same, and it does not matter at all where a person comes from. At the end of the exchange week, everyone gets together for a farewell group photo. We ask them, was the exchange week beneficial to you? If more people would uh, go to people, uh, to places like this, then they could uh, change, uh, change the world because we learned a lot about uh, communication and understanding other people and I think the, need, uh, the world needs that. I think if all young people could participate in such a project, our view of the world and our opinion of other people and countries would change, and it would be easier to live together. Empower comes from the term empowerment and means enabling someone to do something. Our Empower students come from regions where the Pestalozzi Children's Foundation is engaged in development cooperation. Central America, East Africa, Southeast Asia and Southeast Europe. They are young adults who work in education projects that are implemented by PCF's partner organizations and supported by PCF. They are committed and open-minded and ready to engage and exchange with different people and cultures. But what do they learn in the children's village? Our young students follow teaching modules in interculturality, education and international cooperation. The modules in education introduce different approaches to education and teaching methods and familiarize our students with various ways of implementing educational approaches in the classroom. Modules on interculturality concentrate, among others, on intercultural communication. Here, students learn how to deal constructively with conflict situations that concern the group. For example, with problems arising from living together in one house in the children's village. The modules on international cooperation convey technical skills such as project management as well as knowledge about the way international cooperation works. One important field of experience for Empower students is their living together in the children's village. Here, they gain first-hand experience on what it means when people from very different cultural origins live under one roof. Peaceful and open-minded handling of cultural diversity, in other words, intercultural competence, 
is a key qualification which the Empower training course intends to convey. It is important because the knowledge our students acquire here in Trogan, they will take back to their country of origin. The Empower training course is PCF's contribution towards international understanding and peaceful cohabitation of different cultures. It helps build competencies that enable young adults to make a valuable contribution towards the development of their country of origin. Many years of experience and knowledge gained in the children's village are passed on to the Empower students. But the foundation too benefits from our students' knowledge. Welcome to the forest. Enjoy your time and think over about the, the answer of the question. For example, through their collaboration in our exchange projects, where students can complete their internship and where mutual learning takes place. During this internship, our students experience intercultural education as it is practiced in the children's village. But they too bring experience and methods from their countries to the table and in doing so enrich the experience of our teachers. In this way, PCF's international programs and its programs in Switzerland benefit from each other. The training course has come to an end. The Empower students proudly present their diplomas. Their joy is immense. Here in the mountainous regions of Laos, the school children are taught urban curricula that have not been adapted to take account of the living conditions of the rural communities. The foundation therefore supports projects that integrate traditional skills into the curricula. Skills such as basket weaving. This approach supports sustainable development. You must work very carefully so that everything holds together in the end. Somsuk is also taught traditional handicrafts twice a week. I am learning how to make proper rice baskets. One day I will be able to make and sell them myself. But this is about much more than a future source of income. The teacher is a specially qualified inhabitant of the village. She also teaches the children about folklore and children's rights and how to engage with nature in an earth-friendly manner. I want to teach them that it is important to protect the forest. We need the forest to live and the forest also provides the materials we are working with now. It is a necessity of life for us. The older people also participate in the teaching and serve as an example for the young ones. I am happy that the old traditions will not be forgotten. For the children, it is important that these traditions will allow them to actually earn their living later on. In Laos, it is forbidden to teach ethnical minorities in their mother tongue. And teachers are not qualified to teach Lao as a foreign language. The children therefore find it very difficult to cope when they start school, as Lao is the official language of teaching. Our project takes account of the linguistic requirements in that children of kindergarten age are taught Lao through playing. Let's go to Guatemala, where Estefani and her friends are playing in the village brook. In the Indian communities of Guatemala, Discrimination of ethnic minorities and the rural population is a normal part of daily life. This is why it is all the more important for the children and young people to become aware of their rights and actively participate in discussions that concern them. To achieve this, the Foundation supports projects that promote the participation of children in the educational system. They are encouraged to be curious and to ask questions. 
this equips them to fight for their rights in future. The teachers in our projects attend training and further education courses to prepare them for this task. Of course, Estefani still helps in the household, but she understands that this is not her only option for the future. I would like to become an accountant. I like accounting as a school subject and would like to learn more and obtain my diploma as an accountant. In her family, Estefani has seen what it means not to have learnt a profession. Her father has to work hard in the fields of others to try and keep his family alive. Her mother earns a little extra money with weaving. Estefani definitely wants to have her own family one day, but she does not want this to mean that she cannot have her own profession. This she has learnt through her experiences at school. What we have learned most of all is that values play a fundamental role in our lives. This allows people to progress and develop self-esteem. Only those who appreciate their own value can achieve something in life. Here in Ethiopia, most children live in rural areas where the closest school is far away from home. For some children, the distances are so long that they cannot go to school at all. Furthermore, many children have to help with the daily chores of rural life. One of them is 10-year-old Tigist who has to collect firewood, helps at home, and watches over the animals. In Ethiopia, the Pestalozzi Children's Foundation concentrates its activities supporting girls. In Ethiopian tradition, girls are expected to stay at home. And if they are allowed to go to school, they have to help with the housework after school, while boys can do their homework or go out and play. This is why it is so important for us to focus on supporting girls. Tigist attends a school in Dembeli Keta. Everyday life in school is organized in collaboration with parents, schools and education authorities. PCF uses a holistic approach when building such schools. The basis is a well located in the school grounds. It provides safe drinking water for the children and supplies water for sanitary facilities. The entire village benefits from the well. In the old days, our children had to walk far to fetch water from the river. Now we have clean drinking water. The school and its well have helped us very much. Through education, girls are given a chance to lead an autonomous life. In its work, the Pestalozzi Children's Foundation pursues a holistic approach. What does that mean? For example, active learning, evaluation of learning progress, use of media in classroom teaching and adequate classroom infrastructure. Here at the Teacher Training College, future teachers are trained how to apply this approach. They also learn that leisure and sporting activities are important tools which teach children how to build teams. Another important aspect is supervision. Supervisors observe teachers in the classroom and discuss with them how they can improve their teaching. This way, teachers learn how to organize their lessons in a better and more interesting way. Scientific experiments stimulate a child's curiosity and make school more lively and exciting. Projects are planned and implemented by partner organizations in the country. 
the Foundation supports them in doing so and assists the organization in its own institutional development. Cooperation is long-term. Villages, parents, pupils, teachers and educational authorities work hand-in-hand -hand and develop an educational facility that is suited to local needs. In this way, local authorities are encouraged and challenged to become involved and accept responsibility, which helps to ensure the continued existence and impact of the projects. Being involved in the process gives all stakeholders the opportunity to experience what it means to participate. This strengthens their self-responsibility. They see what can be achieved if everyone lends a hand. A future they can shape themselves. The Pestalozzi Children's Foundation has been promoting peaceful cohabitation and education since 1946. Walter Robert, Walter Robert Corti was much affected by the horrors of the Second World War and believed that Switzerland had to help make sure such a war never happened again. He was convinced that we have to start with the children and young people. They have to learn and experience peaceful cohabitation and then teach the world to do the same. We manage more than 40 projects in 11 countries worldwide. This work bears many fruits. Every year, 400,000 children gain access to education. 20 young adults from our partner organizations take part in the training course Empower in Switzerland and receive training which they can implement in their country of origin. And 1,500 children and young people attend intercultural exchange projects at the children's village, such as our school class from Switzerland and the young Serbians. The participants are leaving the children's village. They have learned a lot and are full of hope. Through their own experience, they have widened their horizons and have become more open and tolerant. Children and youth shape our present and they are our future. They are the center of our activities. We are convinced the door to a more peaceful future can easily be opened. We have the key. The key is education. Education with head, heart and hand. <laughs>